So let's talk about the challenges. We're building our checklist here for Battletech Tactica. Challenges in a lower battle value game. A lower battle value game. Because in Battletech, and this is true of any wargaming system, uh, when we play higher point value games, there's this idea in wargaming where... Uh, outside of historical wargaming, which tends to be more based on the narrative where you're trying to recreate actual history. So you see a lot of missions in historicals. They're not really fair, or there might be instances where things are really, really off. You know, let me give you an example. Chain of Command, World War II, one of the best historical rule sets that I've ever played. I love the game. And on a side note, I've pushed up to my channel, Chain of Command, World War II, playlist um, when we go over the rules and we explore some of the narratives of this game. And if you want to check that out, absolutely. But I, I hold no responsibility when now you jump into historical wargaming and start buying tons of tanks. But I use this to illustrate in that game, Chain of Command World War II, the only reason I play late war Germans is because I love tanks and I want to play those tiger tanks and those king tigers and, and have you know these massive, massive war machines. But being late war and fortress Europe, the invasion of Europe by the allies, my infantry squads, you know, when I build my army list, my infantry units are very, very small. I've got, you know, five in a group. I've got two fives and a junior officer. I don't have senior officers because it's late war and there's no senior officers left. Compare that to the invading Americans their units are um, 10 to 20 strong. They have multiples of three. They have senior officers. They have additional heavy weapon support machine guns. You are outnumbered. You are. And, you know, you could always house rule it and do things. But the nature of the game is we are reliving, you know, this historical moment. So pull that back to Battletech. You know, pull that back to Warhammer 40,000, X-Wing Miniatures. These other games where the idea is to keep it somewhat fair... You have a pool of points, and you can pick your toys, buy your toys based on the points. Now, you may say ahead of time, uh, we're not going to use air units, or we're not going to play with artillery, or let's do combined arms, let's do mech versus mech, but we're balancing it out. In the lower battle value games, you have to make some hard, hard choices, because what we're striving for in every single battle is redundancy and to have all of the major phases of the game covered. So redundancy is this idea that um, I have to hit you, right, in Battletech. So if I fire one PPC, what's the chance of hitting you? Now, if it's a short range and I didn't move and you didn't really move, I'm going to have a greater chance to hit you, but it's still only one shot. If you're moving, I'm at long range, I moved, I ran, number of hexes, I might need 10s or 11s or 12s to hit you, it's still only one shot. Whatever the average is, redundancy means if I have three PPCs firing at you, or it might be just, um, you know, that might be based on an awesome mech, or I might have a Warhammer and a Marauder. If I have three firing, that increases the chance of hitting you. So you want to look at mechs that have redundancy, or when you're building a lance, select multiples of the same weapon profile to increase your chances of, of doing something with that. Second to this is um, the idea of being able to capitalize in every phase of the game, in every aspect of the game. So I want to take long-range missiles, and I want redundancy because I can indirect fire you. I can also attack at long-range. Then as we close and we get closer, I want shorter-range stuff, SRM packs, and I want medium lasers. I want small lasers. If we're going to be combined arms, I want machine guns. I want flamers. You know, an example is if I build a lance of just close-in fighting-type mechs, no long-range support, no auto cannons, no PPCs, no LRMs in any capacity, that puts me at a disadvantage because I'm not participating in the opening phases of the game where we're at long range, dancing around, skirmishing around. I need to close really, really fast, or I need to keep you at that close range. So ideally, what we're looking at is redundancy and covering the phases of the game. Now, at a higher battle value buy-in, that's easy to do because I've got 5K. I've got 8K. If I'm playing clans, I got 12K. 
I've got enough on the table that I can get all my toys. So now we start making choices. Now we start making choices in lower battle value games. And the three choices that we have are stick to redundancy and the ability to take advantage of every aspect phase of the game. How we do that in lower battle value games is potentially supplementing with vehicles and infantry. Because vehicles, I can get more stuff on the table at a smaller battle value. But I'm I'm vulnerable to motive hits, and I don't quite have as much armor. And there's some rules that make vehicles not as resilient as mechs. But I get the battle value weapon buy-in. I also maybe want to look at taking lighter machines just to get more mass on the table and to cover more aspects. So an example would be, yeah, redundancy redundancy in range using a PPC. Take a Marauder, take a Warhammer. I've got four PPCs and I have the range of those four PPCs. That's, that's battle value buy-in. If I'm at a smaller battle value game, then... Maybe I take a Warhammer and a Panther. Or maybe I look at medium mechs that have autocannon 10s because they're cheaper to buy in with the battle value. Maybe I don't get four. Maybe I get two. So I try to build it by taking, by downgrading from assaults and heavies and going to mediums and lights. I supplement with vehicles. Redundancy, instead of becoming four to a weapons profile, maybe it becomes two. That's that's really um, the kind of conservative way of playing. And, and I like to play that way um, a lot. The opposite side is just to go hog wild and say, you know what? I'm going to force overload. I'm going to take all my battle value and buy some big stuff. I'm going to bring, I'm not playing Steiner, but I'm going to bring that Atlas to the smaller battle value game. I'm going to bring, you know, hard, heavy hitting stuff and just try to overwhelm you. The challenge with this is you leave yourself. Um, and if this is a blind draw game, what I mean by that is I don't know ahead of time what you're bringing. And, and that tends to be how I play Battletech with my friends. We agree on a mission. Maybe we agree on the map or, or maybe we pick it randomly. But the battle value uh, we spend the night before, you know, picking out our toys figuring out what we're going to play. And, you know, maybe we agree air support or no. So then we have the reveal. When the game starts, it's like, I pull out a mech, you pull out a mech. And you're like, well, look, I knew Fritz was going to bring a stalker. Just, just, we knew it. But then maybe I bring something unexpected where you're like, wow, he hasn't played a Valkyrie or a Javelin in a while. So if we don't know ahead of time, if you go all in on super elite, heavy, heavy or assault units in lower battle value games, you leave yourself vulnerable to... A counter. If I have a very, very fast list of lights and mediums and you have two assaults, I could potentially overwhelm you with just massive movement and initiative and getting rear armor. Um, If you have something that is at long range and I can close to short range or, or short range, I can close to long range. You also leave yourself vulnerable to just the wackiness of the dice the absolute wackiness of a di- of the dice. And it could happen, and you have to be okay with that happening. Um, an example in a, a game a little while ago, Jade Falcon, uh, Trial of Possession, seeing who has the rights to invade a planet to help restore honor and prosperity and civilization against the Desgra Mech Warriors of the Inner Sphere. They had their chance. They had numerous years, and they squandered the legacy of the Star League. So we are actually going back and, and restoring order. We're bringing order to the galaxy, literally, the Inner Sphere. And in this trial of possession, we were fighting for the rights for that invasion. I had a Thor, and I was going against, um, I think it was a Daishi, was whatever my my clan brother had first shot of the game they fire missiles it was a a whatever lrm five pack one missile hits hits center torso roll for crit you know you you roll for the damage location snake eyes center torso crit roll to confirm crit crit confirmed i mean this is the first shot this is like like the table set up we're like two minutes into battle tech and Roll for crit, three crits. Roll for locations. 
engine, 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 and I'm out. And it's like, wait, what? The challenge with that now, okay, that's happened out of if I played a hundred BattleTech games, that's happened out of you know five to eight. I remember every single one of those games because it was crazy. But I illustrate that level of craziness because you have to be aware of that. Um, that could happen, and and that's happened in BattleTech. You know, there was a game where I'm running up with my um, with my Victor and my Hunchback, and my opponent's got an Enforcer. Good cover, good position, you know, throwing down some dice on the table. I run up with the victor, blam, AC-20, headshot, head off. And it's like, wait, what? You had a couple of other mechs. If you are in a lower battle value game and you put that in, you just don't have the model mass on the table to take care of that. That's going to get you in trouble. The other aspect is if you go in all in, you're very, very powerful and generally speaking, you're strong. You know, if I show up with uh, some assault, four assault mechs and you've got eight to 12 other mechs, but the challenge there is also the mission. Do you know the mission? Can Do I have enough? It's called model mass, critical model mass. Do I literally have enough models on the table that I can cover all of the potential mission points? When you do that in smaller battle value games, you can potentially get into trouble. So I'm not saying don't take the big toys. I'm not saying just go light and cheat. Uh, cheap quantity has its own quality type aspect. I'm saying be aware in these lower battle value games, you need to make some hard choices and be ready to potentially make those choices. And based on the choices that your opponent makes, be ready to exploit, be ready to exploit those choices.